how likely you think is it for him to be traded? I know they're talking about Kings or Coyotes. I would I would put it at a a sixty percent chance. I wouldn't say yeah. it's it's a foregone conclusion that he's gone or a done deal. Which team would you say is more likely though? Coyotes to pick him up, just for cap reasons. So the NHL, if you're unaware, has a rule about the cap minimum. You have to spend a minimum to play <laughs> to run a team in the National Hockey League. Yeah. Right. Coyotes are are kind of far from that that floor that you have to be at. So for them, it's it's not like the Kings. The Kings, if they they take Marlow, yeah, they have eleven million dollar in cap space right now. They run into big cap problems next year and the year moving forward. So they're probably going to have to send a contract back to the Leafs. Now, for the Leafs, if you shed hit $6 million, but you take back $4 million, it's not that big of a... You free up $2 million, so I guess that's cool, but it's not that good. Where the Coyotes, you might have a chance where you can say, hey, we'll give you Marlow and a third or fourth round pick. Yeah. And they might actually just eat the contract. Now, another possibility, which uh, I would love to talk to somebody who knows the ins and outs of, of the CBA and see if it's possible, which I think it is, is get a third team involved, like a Carolina. Carolina's got to re-sign Sebastian Ajo, but they're still going to be struggling to hit the cap floor. They, they sold all their players. Yeah. So get the third team involved, basically just to, okay, Leafs and Marlowe to Let's Carolina, the right? They retain, they yeah. tell you a lot of retain salary of a player. If they retain, they already a 50% of Marlowe's contract, and then flip him to the Kings, if the Kings want him. And then... Carolina gets the benefit of they get cap on their books, so they get closer to the floor, but they don't have to pay this loser who's only going to get 15 goals. And then the Kings get the player they want. And now for me, it's why do the Kings want him besides Todd McClellan, who coached him in San Jose, yeah. uh, is now the Kings coach. But if anybody's watched this guy over the, over the last season of hockey, he, he has very minimal value left, and especially at 6.2 million. <laughs> <laughs> What's it? How old is he? Close to 40. 38, 39. Fuck, yeah. And uh, the thing is, when the Leafs signed him, Everybody said, oh, but he can still skate. He can't skate anymore. And everybody says, <laughs> can't skate anymore. it's known the reason why he, he signed with the Leafs yeah. is because we're the only team that offered him a three-year deal as opposed to a two-year deal, and we gave him a no-trade clause. And now both those things... I was going to get into the, the no-trade yeah, so clause. He's got to accept the trade. That's why everything is coming close to where he's got his San Jose house. LA. Phoenix. Back to West Coast where he might accept the trade and be comfortable. LA. He liked Todd so, McClellan, his old with, coach. With Arizona. <laughs> how likely is it for him to accept that trade? Even LA, I don't know. It, it's gotta be does he want to relocate his kids twice in three years? LA wouldn't be a bad option for me. <laughs> oh well, yeah. So I would relocate there. You know, but the thing is, even if you live in LA, you're two, two and a half hours away from San Jose. It's not like you can live in your San Jose house and, and then play in LA. You're selling your Toronto house, and you probably might keep your San Jose house if you if you want to keep you can that house. Have your family out there. Have like a side place in LA. Yeah, you, but, but what he could do is move his family back to San Jose. He lives in LA. You can still see the one off days exactly, and yeah. stuff, right? But two and a half hour commute is not light. <laughs> oh, not let me let me just swing by for dinner, honey. See you in two and a half hours. Hey, that's tough. You're fucking commuting in like a, a Lamborghini or something. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind. Just fly. <laughs> yeah. Or. You know, Red Bull, swing us a sponsor. Maybe swing Marlowe's sponsor. He'll be flying. He'll get some wings. And there you go. He'll fly right over. Anything else you got to say about Marlowe, though? No, I mean, Kyle Dubas has got a big job ahead of him. If he can trade Patrick Marlowe, yeah. fantastic. But if he can't take Cap back. Everybody says he's going to take a roster from LA. Well, what's the point then? If it's a $3 million, sure, you at least you clear $3 million. If you're going to take 4 to $5 million back in salary, you cleared a mill. And then, is it worth taking out a veteran who all the players like? Matthew spent Christmas with Marlo. Marlo, um, Matthews and Marner are both very close to the Marlo yeah. family. If you're only clearing a million to two million, is it worth disrupting the locker room? If you can clear three, four, five, even six, then yes. But for one or two million, is it worth taking out a veteran who's a big leader in with those guys? Hey, if he ain't winning you the games, why well, have him really there? I know he have a relationship, but sometimes you gotta get past those things. I agree, but. He he helps show those guys professionals and what it takes to win, right? Oh, yeah. Everybody talks about veteran really leadership. Pro. The biggest thing about veteran leadership is showing you what it takes to win. Not that he's ever won a cup, but <laughs> 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 well. that San Jose, ah, they got so close this year, man. I feel bad for that organization. Almost as bad as the Leafs. But I think that's all we got to say about Patrick Marlowe, but his situation is linked to the next guys. Are you talking about Nikita? Nikita Zaitsev. Putting his house up for sale? Yeah, so I got a little insider info a few weeks ago. So Nikita Zaitsev only asked for the trade, as we know it, about yep. a week ago, uh, citing personal reasons. His house went on one for sale in Toronto three weeks ago. So 
one of two possibilities. One, he knew he was going to do this for a long time and thinking about it. For some or, reasons, he's probably been thinking right? about it forever. Or number two, he, he asked the Leafs like a long time ago and, and put his house for sale and it just got leaked to the media. The media was slow to it. Um, the reporters had no idea was coming. But the, the most interesting thing for me, what I kept thinking is, yeah. what is his reasoning? If it's personal reasons, like, did you want to move back to Russia? Well, then you would ask to void your contract. Were you unhappy with Mike Babcock? Are you unhappy with how the fans and the media constantly attack you and see how bad your contract is? Yep. Five years left to four and a half million. He does an interview with a Russian paper and the translation comes to, he's mad with his usage. Essentially, he wants to be using the offensive zone more. He's top four defenseman, gets 18 to 22 minutes a night. Yep. I cannot stress enough. Even his first year was okay offensively. But it's not like he tore it up. This guy struggles to even make a first pass out of his um, out of his own end, and he said that he feels he should be uh, more exposed offensively. He's only on the ice for defensive zone faceoffs, and as soon as the puck goes to the offensive end, he's asked to change. Well, contribute something <laughs> offensively before you get Gunner offensive Nodal. ice time. Yeah. Like, let me pull up this guy's numbers even from his first year when this guy thinks. But would you want a guy like that on the team then? A guy who's more worried about himself than the team? No. And winning games? He, he's only concerned about his own numbers. Exactly. And even that first year, you had 36 points. It's not like you ripped the damn cover off the book. You had eight goals and 18 assists. Oh, sorry. That was in Russia. Four goals, 32 assists. Four goals. I don't even know if this guy can hit the net when he shoots. Every time it seems when he's got a point shot or off the rush, it goes wide. So where does this whole him wanting to be more used in the offensive... I don't know. In the last season, in 60 games, he had 13 points. This season, 81 games, 14 points. Like, it's not like Mike Babcock is calling you off. You go off the offense's own face-offs, you're on five yeah. seconds, and, oh, get off, get off. You're having five-second shifts. It's just not happening. So, whether it's him or his agent telling him inside his head that he's worth more and not being used, it just, it just boggles my mind that this guy thinks that he's an offensive threat and should have, like, maybe he thinks he's be playing the, playing the power play. But then again, I would want a guy like that off the team. Yeah. Be worried about winning and, like... You know, what's best for the team, not what's best for yourself. But now, there's a there's a bigger issue as a whole here, right? So, everybody says his contract is garbage. I think throughout the playoffs when he got paired with Jake Muzzin, yeah. if he's playing second pairing, uh, at $4.5 million, that's pretty good value if he can be your shutdown pairing. And then, you're losing Jake Gardner. That's pretty much a foregone conclusion. But if you trade Zaitsev, yeah. maybe you can use that money for Jake and come to a, a hometown discount. <clears throat> but... The way your defense is set up right now, you're going to have the minimum three rookies coming up from the AHL. Callie Rosen, Roy Rasmus Sandin, maybe Lilligren, uh, Justin Hall, a couple other guys. So you have three spots to fill because Ron Hainsey's out too. If you trade Zaitsev, the only defenseman under contract for this coming season are going to be Morgan Riley and Jake Muzzin. Do you want to bring in four young defensemen who have no NHL experience for a team that everybody thinks should be competing for a Stanley Cup? It's not feasible. So everybody wants to ship Nikita Zaitsev off for f- financial reasons, but and then and also they're like, stage? yeah, they're like, oh, we can re- resign our Marner, give him more money that he wants. No, that those are two different things. If you get rid of Zaitsev, you cannot use that money for Mitch Marner. That money has to go back into your defensive corps, whether it's uh, <laughs> resigning Jake Gardner or bringing in a free agent. But the problem is there is no free free agent defenseman that I want to add to this team this year. There is nobody out there. Jacob Truba is an RFA, but you're going to have to give up draft picks to Winnipeg if you want him. Do you really want to do that? There's no young guys you think they, they can bring up? They're but but Cali Rosen defenders. can step in. He's a little bit older playing in the AHL. Yeah. Rasmus Sandin, from what I've heard, people think he could play, but he's still too young, makes mistakes, and he doesn't have the mental toughness to play in the Leaf system. And Start what we saw, early. I saw Gino Rado making a great point today. Is it that these guys are ready and therefore you're calling them up, or is it that you need somebody to fill it, fill that void, and whether they're ready or not, you need them to be ready. You're gonna call them up, and is that fair to the guy if he's not ready to play in the National Hockey League? Sure. If the guy's in the G League in basketball, yeah. you, and you just call him up and he's not ready, then you're hampering his development, and you're screwing your own team over. So are these kids actually ready, or is it just Dubis is maybe gonna make a couple yeah. mistakes and force these kids in the lineup, and fold under pressure, All right? So what so, do you want to see happen with him then? Side stuff. You have two options. If you're trading Zaitsev, you have to re-sign Jake Gardner. But don't don't you, like, when a guy is asking, like, he's almost asking for a trade. Don't it's, you got to trade him at that point? Cause he's not essentially, because team. it's it's hard to walk that back. Exactly. You want to leave our market, the Leafs fans are going to eat you up if you end up staying here. So that's fine. If you're trading Nikita Zaitsev, unless you're getting a defenseman back, yeah. 
which we'll see. I don't know who's going to take him and, and give you a serviceable defenseman back. If you trade him, I'm re-signing Jake Gardner because, like I said, he's, he's pretty much the best defensive free agent that you can go after. I think there's one top dog name I can't remember off the top of my head. Bring back Jake Gardner, probably around $5 million. I don't think he's going to get the six that people think he, he deserves. And then re-sign Ron Hainsey. One-year deal, two million, two and a half, and then bring up two young guys as opposed to potentially four: Cali Rosen and whether it's, it's Justin Hall. It's another veteran. Maybe you find somewhere else in a, yeah. in a small deal, six defenseman, or if Sandin. Maybe you have a, two or three guys who audition for the last spot. If you trade Zaitsev and you don't sign Gardner, and don't sign Hainsey, man, this team's gonna be nowhere near what they were this past exactly. season. And, and we I'm, always say defense wins championships. You ain't got a defense. In the playoffs. In the regular season, the Leafs just went and outscored everybody. What happened in the playoffs? Exactly. Couldn't keep the puck out of their own net and couldn't score because it gets way harder. And like you said, everything gets tighter. Everything gets tighter in the playoffs. Only guy who performed for the Leafs was Austin Matthews. Nobody else really on offense showed up. Well, Martin did first game. One game. (laughs) Kudos to him. And he took those shots. Those blocks. Do you want to talk about that tidbit I found out about? I heard about Mitch Marner's dad. How credible is this source? <laughs> so, I'm not going to say like it's it's to be concluded this is what happens. Just mention it what just happened. in case if we hear <laughs> yeah. it again somewhere else but we can say we said it first. It, it's been rumored around there that, um, you know, Mitch Marner has a hel- helicopter involved. helicopter father. People were saying the same thing of... Um, helicopter father. Helicopter dad. He's like hovering above you the whole time, you know? <laughs> Good. A lot of people thought that William Nylander's dad was involved in the free agency situation last year. Yep. I didn't buy a whole lot into that. I thought I was maybe more his agent. Um, apparently, Mitch Marner's dad is so involved. This comes from a source who's in the, the hockey equipment industry. Not from True Hockey. That's what he's going to be thinking, his main sponsorship. That's what I'm saying to it with a grain of salt. So I don't know how connected this guy could be. Nobody could double source this for me or fact check it. There's nobody else who said they'd heard this story. But supposedly, Mitch Marner's dad last season was texting Babcock during games, complaining about power play time uh, when his son was put on the fourth line yeah. and stuff like that. And it got to a point. Was the coach responding though, or was he just reading them and just? No. So the guy didn't want to get it. When I started asking him questions, the guy could realize that I, what I was doing and didn't want to be, you know, put you're, in that situation. You're in uh, reporter mode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what are you in reporter mode? So it got to the point where Mike Babcock was so infuriated and, and couldn't get this to stop. Like he had talked to Mitch and, and, and Mitch just said, it's not my business. Mike Babcock went out and changed his phone number and got a new phone to avoid his dad. Now, the reason why I say take this with a grain of salt is one, because it's, it's not true hockey, the company that has all the involvement with him. And and number two, I'm sure Mitch would say, all right, Pops, cool down. Yeah. And really, if he... Can't cha- you, yeah, I was going to say, can't the coach have a discussion with the player? Maybe he doesn't want to get involved too much. Babcock with, with Mitch doesn't want to get in his head midseason. But, again, but also, when he changes his number, Mitch Marner is going to get Mike Babcock's new number. And what's stopping him from forwarding that number to his dad? But now, everybody says Mitch Marner's dad is another. Eric yeah. Lindros' dad was very similar. And they say he's, he's Lindros' dad 2.0. And that he might be uh, pushing that. You know, he wants 11, 12. He's better than Austin Matthews type money. So I just think it comes down to Mitch... And the odd chance that somebody shows you this clip, just be your own man. It, it, yeah. it came down to Willie last year. He was about to miss the whole season. Two hours before the deadline, we had to sign in December. He picked up the phone and called Dubis himself, or had his agent call and he talked. He says, "Listen, we get, you want to get a deal done? This is what I'll do." So just as much as your agent's there to advise you, and your parents want to look out for you the best. That's do you want to be in Toronto and do you want to win? Yeah. Because what you deserve isn't always what you get in life. All right, you you do you deserve eleven? I don't think so, but you can make the case that Mitch Martin deserves eleven. But it's you take money. away that you take away the opportunity for the Leafs to win. It's not possible. All right, look at the teams that are in the Stanley Cup Finals right now. Yeah. Boston's highest player paid player I think is Bergeron. He's just under eight million. <clears throat> all right, um, St. Louis I believe it's Ryan O'Reilly. He's in the sevens. Out of the t- final four teams, the highest paid was Brent Burns, eight million. Nobody at nine, ten, eleven, or twelve on either of those teams. So they built. Deep teams, depth. The Leafs have uh, Matthews at 11 and a half starting this year, Tavares at 11. And if you give Marner 11, are you kidding me? Chicago, after winning three Stanley Cups, gave Kane and Taves 10 and a half each. Yeah. 
and then they had to sell everybody else and they haven't made the playoffs only once or twice since then in the last four years since they did that so if if Chicago can't win with two guys at 10 and a half how are the Leafs going to win with three guys making 11 plus not possible so Mitch do you want to win or not Exactly. If you just give us your money, we're taking the four first round draft picks and we'll, we'll see you next year. Well, that's the issue you see in sports, man. The dad that's around too much. Yeah. You know? It, it's Like, I know the parents want to look best self for the children, but... It's his career man. at the yeah, end of the day. Like, yeah, let him decide. He's he's 20... I think he's a year younger than us. He's 21 years old. Yeah. Let this let this man handle his business. And if the, if this is true, how many teams are really going to want him? If hearing this, the, how involved the dad is. You know, they don't want that kind of drama in their life. Lonzo Ball? Yeah. Right, exactly. A lot of teams said we don't want to touch him because of Lavar. Lebo- exactly. Now Lavar is chilled out since his son has been terrible, but and it's should. a factor. It, whether it's minor hockey or, or professional hockey, professional sports, no coach wants to be badgered by a parent who thinks they know how to do their job better than the guy who's getting paid, like Babcock, exactly. six million to, Again, to coach a that, team. That's childish shit. You know, yeah. you don't want to be dealing with someone's parents when you're freaking. <laughs> Playing like a, you're playing in the playoffs in the Stanley. Like you're trying to get to a Stanley Cup championship, and you're dealing with someone. And, and, and your dad is allegedly someone's, someone's texting dad your is head harassing coach. You? Like, are you kidding me? Oh man, harass someone else, man. <sighs> like for Mike Babcock, that that's a tough situation to be in. If, I, if I'd like to know how he handled it. Yeah. I would love to ask him that question. <laughs> One day. One day. Yeah. I'll, I'll try and get some more info on that story we'll and nail it down. One day it'll happen.